never heard this song played on your behalf before, have you? Uh, it was definitely before my time, but this is the first time I heard it, yes. <laughs> first time ever? Oh, uh, no, not first time ever, but on the set, yes. Oh, on the set, okay. Corey Legit, or is it, it's Legit, right? Yes, it's Legit, Okay, yes. Corey Legit of the San Diego Chargers. That's the way I've been, I've been calling you since 2011, since you came into the league as the 18th overall pick out of Illinois. Uh, Big Ten man of the San Diego Chargers. Good to see you, Corey. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you coming in because I know this is, you know, Tuesdays certainly <laughs> in the playing season are very precious. And on the outset of it, I really appreciate you coming up. Uh, so right now, five days from the season opening up, you've got to go track down Alex Smith. You've got to go make sure that what it looks like is a running attack minus Jamal Charles does not get past you. What is going through your mind five days before playing season? Um, right now, the biggest thing is us, us going in and stopping the run. You know, showing guys that we can't stop the run because that was one of our biggest uh, nemesis last year. And uh, we, we're going out this year to correct those things and uh, just play football, you know. And uh, looking, at, looking at what the Chiefs do, I mean, right now they, they run the ball pretty well. They have done it pretty well. Uh, they have ran it pretty well also mm -hmm. throughout the preseason. And we're just looking forward to going in to Kansas City and uh, putting on a good show. What's the scoop with Bosa? We saw he was uh, not practicing yesterday. What can you tell me about him? Uh, yeah, he, uh, I believe the coach said he had a little bit of tightness in his hamstrings or what have you. Um, but I, I know he, I know he'll be back and ready because uh, he looked like he was in great shape, and I just can't wait to see him out there on the football field. What was it like welcoming him into your locker room after uh, it, all it, that? It was great. Uh, we, we made him cut. We made him go up in front of the team. You know, every rookie has to get up there and sing, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, discuss his uh, signing bonus and everything. He, he told us we can Google it if we need to. Um, what do you mean? Hold uh, on a second. So you say to him, you've got to discuss your signing bonus? Is uh, you that know, what it was? It, it's just you know one of the rule changes you make rookies do. You know, you just have them go in there and, and you know you have them introduce themselves. You know, they, they tell you what school they went to. Did, and he, also, say, did, he, did he say the from, in front of Ohio Yeah, he State? said D, and then he also sung their fight song, and we told him, hey, we just gave him a boo. You know, everyone booed him. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it was pretty fun, though. He, he did a good job up there, though. Then how did he explain his signing bonus? He said Google it? Yeah, he told, yeah, he told us to Google it because it was all over the news. You know, that was one of the big uh, controversial oh, things. Oh, yeah, we talked about yeah. that every, uh, every so often on a show like this one. Yeah. So when, when, when a guy who's never played it down in the NFL is – handling his business right which right. i know is something you can respect you're a guy who signed a five-year deal just a couple of years ago correct well, how does that play out in the locker room though uh Corey? it plays it plays out great i mean i think i'm glad to have him there now you know that he's he handled his business and uh, he got his contract signed and he's in the locker room with us and now he's learning the playbook and he's going to definitely help us out this upcoming year and uh you know for me you know just being able to sign a contract and, and know that you're here and wanted in san diego is great you know it shows that the ownership believe that I am one of the key pieces that can help us win the Super Bowl. Chargers defensive lineman Corey Legit here, uh, not only on the behalf of the Chargers, but also the American Heart Association. We'll talk about that in a second and why that's near and dear to your heart and obviously your, your, your families. Um, so what was it like, the final preseason game, with the military being honored, flags out there on the field, and you knew there was a guy across the way that might sit during the national anthem and he wound up kneeling? What was that like? Um, for me, uh, you know, in the stadium, it was, it was pretty crazy. You know, we got a, he got a lot of boos and a lot of people upset. But for me, you know, I, I, the, the United States flag stands for everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And I feel, uh, you know, he, he has the right to express himself. And uh, I, I think he, um, you know, he, he's doing what he feels is best for him. But um, I stay out of it. I focus on what I can I, I can control, which is football, and go sure. out there and play football, you know? Right. And um, I, I just leave that in, up to Kaepernick and everyone else. Well, I mean, it's 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 him kneeling now instead of sitting to give a message that he is trying to say, don't watch me kneeling, listen to what I'm saying as to why I'm kneeling. How is that playing out with you and fellow NFL players uh, I think, right now? I think, I think it's uh, probably 50-50. You know, some guys are upset and some guys may support him. Um, but you know, right now, it, that's 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 completely up to Kaepernick. Um, I'm just I'm just staying out of that as much as I can because that's a problem that I mean I would never personally kneel or or, or take a seat doing a national anthem uh, because I love my freedom, I love the country. And um, but you know, Kaepernick is entitled to what uh, to express how he feels. Right, and it's getting to the point though where folks like me are asking players, right? Why aren't you kneeling? Correct. And if you're not kneeling during the national anthem, then you're not, uh, you know, being cognizant of the problems that Kaepernick's trying to bring to the fore uh, is that are, are you and your fellow colleagues talking about the issues that Kaepernick is bringing to uh, the yeah, fore? yeah some guys some guys definitely talk about it they, they feel that he can go about it a different way um, they think that uh, the message that he's sending is, is a good message but they believe he can do it a different way 
And plus, I, I've been to other countries and I've seen how, you know, other countries, how the government treat their uh, their citizens. And I mean, here in America, we got a pretty good, uh, pretty made in the shade. And if, uh, you know, if a lot of people will see other countries and go visit other places, they, they would know that uh, we we're very privileged here. Corey Legit joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What is Coach McCoy talking about in terms of goals? Are you talking Super Bowl? In that oh, locker room, of course, every team is talking Super Bowl. Well, right? I mean, it's how so? I mean, how is it? How is it mentioned um, in the locker room? One week, one week at a time. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to be one and zero every week. At the end of each week, we're gonna play hard, tough, and together. How uh, is, which it? is I know that which is his. his you, you know, fans hear that, and it's just like you know, okay, take it one at a time. But right for uh, real though, when it when it's when, talking when, about a journey here, correct. Um, I mean, overall, the guys, the guys in the locker room uh, within us, yeah. the players. More and so, uh, he, he's giving the team more to us now. You know, we're taking control over it, and and we know that at the end of the day, in order for this thing to go, it's on the players. You know, there's only so much a coach can do. Uh, a player-driven team is way better than a coach-driven team, and the coach understands that. Him, uh, Coach McCoy understands it. The coordinator also understands it, and uh, Coach Wizard Hunt too. And they know that hey, the players is is, is what's going to make this thing go. So who's driving it? You? Uh, you? We all are. Philip, Brandon, Mebane, Melvin Ingram, Jason Verrett, myself. I mean, we all are ready to just go out here and show that we're we're not there. no AFC chumps or whatever the heck people are saying about us. <laughs> Who's saying so, that about you? Yeah. I know I just said that the Patriots are winning the AFC chumps. in front of you, but people are saying that about you. Uh, I believe so. They they saying it on the in the, you know the little social media means and what have you. But we're, we're gonna go out here and, and prove some people wrong this year. Okay. So give me. You want to guarantee something on me? Uh, I'm not gonna guarantee. I just show you every Sunday. How about that? We just we just lay it out there every Sunday, and we'll, we'll go from there. Starting in Kansas City. Starting in Kansas. City. Coming AC. up this week. Coming up this weekend. And Philip, uh, what does what does he say to the team when he's in? What what is he like? Because he he's he's all sorts of intense. Well, you know, on it, the field and. He, he spoke. He spoke. He spoke the other day. Um, what do you say? Can you and, um, give me some? This is 13th season, making a team. He sat in that in that locker room in, in, in our team meeting room for 13 years in a row. And um I'd be dang if everyone just it it was a very emotional speech, you know. And um I don't want to get into into too much of the details, but the guy he he, he busts his tails each and every day. And and if I can't give him and Antonio Gates everything that I have, mm -hmm. guys who have put some blood, sweat, and tears into this organization and and, and also into this game, and if I can't respect what they what they what their wishes are. I'm not, I'm not a good teammate, and I'm, I'm working my tail off to help achieve some of those things that those guys, well, the one thing that they really want the most. Corey Legit is sitting here from the Chargers and the Rich Eisen Show. A real brief, though. I know you don't want to give away too many details. So you're basically saying Gates and Rivers, would it be fair to paraphrase, I've done this 13 years. My window of opportunity is maybe on the other side, okay, and it's time to win right now, and I'm trying my heart out. You need to as well. Is that well, similar to that? Well, basically what it was was he asked everyone, raise your hand if you if you ever been AFC West champions. And there was only four guys in the room that, that was able to raise their hands, two coaches and two players. So, I mean, over the over the time that he's been here, the team has changed dramatically and uh it just it's just time for us to take a turn for the better. And and we have a small window of opportunity. Let's talk about uh your son Corey. He was born with a heart condition? Yes. What condition was that? Uh, ASV and uh, VSD. Uh, he had a hole on the top and the bottom of his heart. And um, at the age of, well, a couple couple weeks, actually, he had to go into surgery and uh, get it repaired. And uh, now he's living fine. He's happy. He's, he's happy. He runs around with a How ton old is of energy. He? Right now, he's four years old. Okay. At the time, he was maybe six weeks, I want to say. Six when you weeks. found this out? Uh, we found it out uh, within the first two weeks of him being born. I believe, wow. Yeah, that he had uh, two holes on his heart. So... Uh, they went in, they uh, did the surgery, it was successful. Now he's happy, he's running around going crazy, and uh, he's drive him. He drives his mom crazy in me. Okay. With a ton of Isn't energy. that the best, though? Yes, that's the best. That is that, the greatest. That is the greatest. And for you to be able to balance all this um, with football and obviously kids, and so you've got, how many, does he have any siblings? Uh, yes, he has uh, two siblings, two younger sisters. Okay. Yes, two younger two sisters. Two younger sisters. And yes. Two, so you've got three under four three in under the four, Legion yes. household? Yes, yes. First of all, bless your wife. Thank you. Uh, and so you want to raise money uh, on behalf of the American Heart Association um, at a number of community events where you, where you lend your time. Uh, fundraising goal of twenty thousand dollars. Yes. H how can people get involved in this? Uh, you can you can get involved by visiting uh, San Diego SDHeartWalk.org, and also um, not to mention too, for every sack that I get this year, I will be looking forward to donating uh, AED machine 
and also a CPR course training class kit for mm -hmm. um, to local schools in San Diego for each sack that I get. And also, um, I'm willing to give out EKGs to some local schools in San Diego also, because every year we always hear about athletes all over this country passing away mm -hmm. from heart issues or heart diseases that they didn't know exist or that they had. And I'm just trying to help prevent uh, prevent any kids uh, locally um, from going through or any families locally going through uh, any kind of tragic or suffering as some families have. SDHeartWalk.com. We've got that up on the screen no, right there org. for the I mean, SDHeartWalk.org. Oh, dot org. Okay. Yes. SDHeartWalk.org is where you can go right now. Um, we tweeted it out from our show account as well. Uh, so, Corey, good luck to you this season. I hope you get a lot of sacks. So you can donate as much as you want. And, uh, for, and our listeners and viewers can can chime in as well. So three kids, you're five shy of uh, Phil. Yes, Rivers. five. Yeah, five. Yep. <laughs> he's he set the bar pretty high. <laughs> yes, he has. He certainly has. Good luck to you this season. Uh, thank Thanks, you. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate you. You bet. Five. From yeah. the University of Illinois. So, yeah, you know what I mean? The whole I, the stuff with I, Ohio State? Come nah, on, I, I can't do the D so stuff. I don't say but... the University of Michigan. Yeah, I see that I see that wing helmet on your Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're 60 points. And it's all over here. I see, yeah. Well, you got Lovey now. You got Lovey yeah, we got Yeah, we got a shot now. You know, we got like a, a pretty good shot now. I, I like him. I like him, man. I met that guy, and he's he's bringing some energy. He's bringing some good vibes around that uh, community down in Champaign. Thanks for coming on the show, Corey. I appreciate you it. You got it. Your phone calls eight four four two zero four. rich And when we return, also some of the news going around the National Football League and the rest of the sports world on a busy football Tuesday. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience. San Francisco, within its 45 square miles, is contained one of the most colorful and romantic cities in the world. Approaching from the south, the traveler views with sudden excitement the city thrusting its white towers into the blue California sky. But it is from the east that the city reveals its famous profile, framed by the silver towers of the Bay Bridge. Seen from the north, the distant city crowns the tip of the peninsula that reaches into the broad waters of the surrounding bay. The gigantic portals of the mighty bridge that spans the Golden Gate provide a dramatic entry. From the outskirts, let us now move directly into the very heart of the city, the well-planned Civic Center. The City Hall dominates the square, which is flanked by the main public library, the State Building, and the Civic Auditorium. Behind the City Hall lie the Veterans Building, and the War Memorial Opera House, which was the birthplace of the United Nations. Credited with having stopped the onslaught of the 1906 fire, Venice Avenue still remains one of San Francisco's broadest thoroughfares. San Francisco is a city of many hills, and Telegraph Hill is perhaps the most famous. Here was located the lookout station of early days. A semaphore from which the hill derived its name signaled to ships approaching through the Golden Gate. A mecca for tourists, the hill provides a magnificent view of the bay and its man-made wonders. Eight and a half miles in length, the Bay Bridge is the longest bridge in the world. It is actually a two-unit span divided in the middle by Yerba Buena Island. 
to the left of Yerba Buena lies man-made Treasure Island, site of the 1939 World's Fair. Ships from the four corners of the earth find their way to San Francisco's Embarcadero. Famous for its infamous residence, Alcatraz Prison, alias The Rock. Stretching across the gateway to the Orient is the longest single span in the world, the mighty Golden Gate Bridge. At the foot of the hill lies colorful Fisherman's Wharf. Reminiscent of a Mediterranean scene, the wharf captures a bit of sunny Italy. Quaint seafood grottos and fine restaurants invite the gourmet. Typical of the wharf are the steaming kettles of the sidewalk crab stands. The supply of fresh fish and seafood is brought in daily by sturdy little craft that berth in the lagoon behind the restaurants. Between Fisherman's Wharf and the Golden Gate Bridge lies the fashionable marina district with its handsome yacht harbor. This is the marina district of today, but perhaps this old photograph will remind old timers that this was the site of the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition. An architectural gem the crumbling Palace of Fine Arts is the only exposition building remaining today. Driving along the northern end of the peninsula, we reach the salient point that provides the closest view of the Golden Gate Bridge. California Palace of the Legion of Honor, one of San Francisco's finest museums, is an exact replica of the Legion of Honor in Paris. The once gay resort of the 90s is now a modern restaurant fronting the Pacific Ocean and overlooking Seals Rocks. A ride on the newly installed Sky Tram should be included in the tourist itinerary. Just below the cliff house is a year-round amusement park.
picturesque motor roads lead us through the largest man-made park in the world. Created out of a wilderness of shifting sand dunes, over 1,000 acres of verdant meadows, shady lanes, colorful gardens, and beautiful lakes make Golden Gate Park one of the wonders of the world. In a centrally located area of public buildings stands the De Young Museum visited by more people than any museum in the country. A fascinating collection of fish and reptiles from all over the world are displayed at the Steinhardt Aquarium. Within this block-long conservatory is a veritable paradise of rare tropical plants. The surrounding gardens offer an ever-changing display of colorful seasonal blooms. In the exquisite Japanese tea garden, exotic pagodas create the atmosphere of the Far East. Blooming cherry blossoms enhance the beauty of moon bridges arching quiet lagoons. Scattered throughout the park are numerous lakes with their colorful waterfowl. This lake is a mecca for hobbyists who come to sail the miniature boats, while Stowe Lake attracts those with a taste for rowing. Rising from the center of this lake is a rugged island with its plunging waterfall. Emerging from the park not far from where we entered, we continue our travels on the Great Highway, paralleling the Pacific Ocean. Of course, no tour of San Francisco is complete without a visit to the zoo. Could Darwin have been right?
For children of all ages, a ride on the miniature train is a thrilling experience. the recreational areas that border the ocean, we turn eastward toward the heart of the city. In the center of the city rise San Francisco's famous Twin Peaks. Reached by a spiraling road, the summit commands a spectacular view of the encircling city. Street. The main arterial through the downtown area stretches like a broad ribbon from Twin Peaks to the ferry building. section of Powell and Market Streets in downtown San Francisco is located one of the terminals of the Powell Street cable car line. To reverse their direction, the cable cars are pushed onto the unique turntable and swung around manually by the motorman or the conductor, much to the delight of the riders and spectators. These jaunty little relics of bygone days form a romantic link in San Francisco's transportation system. Invented here in 1873 to travel over the steep hills, the cable cars have become a symbol of San Francisco. Knob Hill, we cross the California cable car line. The cars can be distinguished by their difference in color. On this route, we pass several of San Francisco's most renowned hotels. Aboard one of these venerable little cars, one enjoys a bell ringing excursion up and down the San Francisco hills.
Where the West meets the Orient. Grant Avenue, the heart of Chinatown. Along this narrow pagoded street hovers the exotic spirit of this Oriental colony. The largest settlement of Chinese in the world outside of Asia. Bazaars and curio shops invite you to examine choices of jade, silks, and rare antiques. to the interesting places one may visit in San Francisco. The ferry building, the churches and colleges. Or the tourist may prefer a leisurely drive along the many scenic boulevards. For the true adventurer, there is that final thrill, a ride down the world's most crooked streets. Eight hairpin turns in a single block. Francisco, the cosmopolitan city, queen of the Pacific, the city by the Golden Gate, truly the city of many wonders. <laughs> 